<laughs> okay, so the tape is rolling, both tapes are rolling, and action! bass players, double bass players, bass fiddle players, bass violins, uh, electric bass, horizontal bass, bass, bass. Play <laughs> <laughs> bass players around the world, welcome to The Basement. That was a performance by one of our legendary master bassists, Detroit bassists. Tell us your name, sir. Dan Plisco. <coughs> Dan Plisco, man. Yeah. Welcome yeah. to The Basement. Yeah. It's really a pleasure to be here, man. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's we are honored. We are yeah. honored to have it's you also here mine. In, yes. in, the, in, the, in the basement with us, and that's B A S S M I N T. And also hanging out with us, uh, I like to call a bookend since they're sitting so close. Uh, to my left, his right, is a extraordinary Detroit bass player, Robert Hurst. And to my right, Dan's left. It's another extraordinary classical Detroit bass player, um, Mr. Rick Robinson. I'd like to welcome you guys here. Yeah. Also, <laughs> also chiming in, we have, uh, if I go this way, we got, uh, tell us your name, sir. Bruce Agababian. A Detroit bass player. Tell us your name next to him. Earl uh, Davis. Uh, another Detroit bass player. And tell us your name, sir. Reginald Canty. Another Detroit bass player and the host of our In the Basement yeah. series. Yep. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for allowing us to uh, use your basement um, and electricity. Yes. Oh, I you know, know. know. <laughs> I was I like, seen you, Bill. I, yeah, I saw, I saw the lights flicker. I was like, oh, we're going to have to take up a collection. <laughs> also, hanging out with us is another upright Detroit bass player. Tell us your name, sir. Jerry Cameron. And. Man, you're all way up down here from an up, almost upstate Michigan. About 250 miles to be with the legends here. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is this is awesome, and um, we also have uh, one of our young uprighters. See, we keeping it going next yeah. gen right here. That's right. This is upright 5.7 version. <laughs> and what's tell us your name, sir? Jonathan Mirkotten. Wait, hold on a sec. 
Oh my God, it's a shadow at that angle. Uh-oh. And tell us your name, sir. Jonathan Mir Cotton. And how long you been playing upright, sir? Six years. Six years. So, and you're 16. Mm-hmm. So you started when you was 10. Uh, yeah. yeah. Guess what? <laughs> I, I, I learned that by playing the trombone. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and we also have with us uh, sitting over here. Julianne, you're. How you doing? I'm fine. Welcome to the basement. Thank you. And uh, anytime you uh, find musicians want to chime in, feel free to chime in at any time. Um, kind of wanted to do this more of a round table style where any topic on the upright uh, come through uh, because I feel like if I actually interviewed you and uh, Dan and had you do uh, your extensive uh body of work it'd take us uh quite some time you know what i'm saying because you've been at this oh, for a while yeah. right oh, i damn. brought you the book so you can just read it uh, <laughs> how's that and by the way the title he's yeah. bass he's vile it's dan mm-hmm. plisco <laughs> i worked steve allen for a week at the db's back in the uh, late 70s DBs. and that's the way he introduced me every night he'd say he's <laughs> bass he's vile it's dan <laughs> yeah, 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 and i figured what a great title for the book yeah. But anyway, that's the story of my uh, musical career. Okay, uh, my my question yes. that I always like to ask first, uh, and I, I'm anticipating the answer to this one. Very seldom do I get excited about the answer before I get it. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start playing the bass and why? 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 why, why? <laughs> To, to lead up to that, I have to tell you that at seven years old, I started to play cello in elementary school. And um, I played cello all the way through elementary school. Now, give me give me a sense of uh, timeline, yearish. Nice. Well, I, I was born in 1935. I'm 70, uh, 78. You're 78 in no way. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good, good. Awesome, man. That Thank is you. awesome, man. I feel like a kid. I still feel like a kid. And uh, I carried my bass down the stairs. I didn't think that was too bad. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I came from a musical family also. Okay. And my dad played violin at Northwestern High School in a string quartet. My uh, mom was a, a graduate of, uh, on piano, Detroit Conservatory of Music. Mm-hmm. Uh, my sister played flute and piano, and I played cello. And we used to have family musicals, uh, mm-hmm. mu- musicals in the house, and people, all my neighbors would come and listen. Mm. And I played all the way through middle school. I had Erwin Klocko, who was a uh, jobbing clarinet player, and I didn't even know what that was at the time. And when I got into high school, I went to Central High. Um, it's, a, it's a little interesting because I was the only one who owned my own cello out of uh, five cello players. I had to eat lunch at the beginning of the class of orchestra, and when I got back about 15 minutes into the class, everybody was using my cello and the school cellos. So I went and started to hang around a very good looking bass player who was (laughs) playing in the back, and I would just stand there, and one day she said, why don't you take a bass out of the closet? And it was another one of those aluminum basses that you were talking about. And after about two months, uh, and I don't want to make this too long, but uh, I just had my 60th high school reunion about uh, about five weeks ago, and I ran into this man who was, uh, he's been a lawyer up in Ann Arbor, Freddie Steingold. In high school, he came up to me me one day and said, uh, hey, would you want to play a gig? And I said, what's a gig? (laughs) <laughs> and um, I had been listening to a lot of jazz, and I really, as a kid, I listened to WJLB um, radio. Uh, Senator Bristow Bryant was the, the, the DJ, he was great, and he played all the Charlie Parker and the, the great music of the day, and so I knew all the tunes. Don't ask me how. And uh, this man said, you want to play a gig? I said, okay, I'll borrow the bass and the teacher let me. I went and I started playing Jewish Weddings with uh, this band. And I still see three of the men who were in that band. It's really amazing. Wow. Um, I, and I just he- had heard bass lines and could play them without anybody telling me. All they did was start to play the tune. I recognized 
the melody and I started to play the lines. And I can't tell you I played as sophisticated as I did years later, but it certainly was, I have records of that and uh, it, it was really okay. So that's how I started playing bass. Wow, oh, that, that, that is awesome. And, yes. Um, what is that that you have in your hands now? What kind of bass is that? There's no name on the inside. It's a German bass about 130 years old. Mm -hmm. I have actually two basses. One was given to me. It's a Fretchner. Now, I can tell you the story of that real quickly. For uh, years and years, I worked with Matt Michaels and Art Mardigan. Um, at, I was, at that time, in 1964, I was working at the Playboy Club downtown Detroit on Jefferson. And um, I was also working. <laughs> I was also working at a place called the Attaché from five to eight. So I'd work five to eight, then go to, across the street to the Playboy Club and work nine to two. <laughs> I'd go to bed at three in the morning, get up at five thirty, and be at Channel Seven uh, to play my TV show in the morning. Six fifteen to yeah. seven o'clock rehearsal, seven o'clock to eight thirty live show, and then we had. Uh, recordings during the day. So I was doing 900 gigs a year mm -hmm. and loving it. I couldn't wait to go to work. Right. Wow. Three hours and I'm getting off of the subject of your bass. But anyway, at the attaché one day, this this man comes in. He's been a regular. He's sitting at the, at the piano bar and he says, I used to play bass. I said, really? I said, how come you, I've been here six months with you every night. How come you never told me? He said, I haven't played in 20 years. It's leaning in the corner of my living room. You should have it. And he brings this Fretchner wow. bass the next night oh my God. and gives it to me. Wow. wow. And um, I played it for 25 years. And then a, uh, an accordion player here in town, who I used to work with once in a while, doing strolling on Sunday afternoons, uh, said, hey, my dad used to play in one of the community symphonies and has a bass at home. There's no name on it. Would you like it? For and I said, I don't need it. I have, uh, I still have two bases at home, but because um, I had three gigs a day, I left one at every gig. You could do that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in fact, Bob Hurst uh, asked me about one of those small bases that I eventually sold. But anyway, um, this man, he said, I, I had a student who was looking for a base, so I paid the man eight hundred dollars. He gave me fifty dollars for selling it to the student. The student didn't buy it. He didn't have the bread. So I leaned it in the corner of my room. And uh, when I got my other base uh, redone, $7,000 worth of redone, Ouch. Um, I started to use the, uh, this base. And I found I loved it. Mm, that, that's so, awesome. Yeah. I, I'm very lucky. I mean, when we start talking about people giving you things, and, and I've tried to pay back through the years by doing the same. Okay. Well, I, 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 that's nice, man. I almost plugged myself. Well, if you got one, you can spare. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I will never leave the house, though. Once you, you, may not have wait, you may not have to wait too long. <laughs> it reminds me of the, the story of the violist who left his viola in the car. When he came back, there were two. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, speaking of... Uh, 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 firewood. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean I, all I can s say how precious Rick, your 200 year old, is, and how precious your 150 year old is, and how quickly they can go up and smoke in, in the wrong environment. Oh, yeah, know? we've all seen that. I mean, like, uh, I guess for upright bass, Michigan climate don't mess with the thing that well, that bad. Not with mine. Nope. Because yeah. I heard like Florida could, in humidity, yeah. humid. Uh, there may be other parts of the country, but uh, yeah. I've never had many much problem with that. Okay. Another thing while we're talking about bases and uh, upright bases. Yep. Uh, we had this discussion in one of the other interviews, uh, but, but I want to uh, stress it again in this one. Is it called a double bass, or is it called an upright bass, or is it called a bass fiddle, or is it called uh, a, a vertical bass? What, 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 or is it called acoustic? What, what is it's the thing? In my called? house, uh -huh. <laughs> it's called a bass. 
And if I have to distinguish between an electric and mine, mine's an upright. Okay. That's how I think about it. Okay, how about you, Rick? What, what do you say? Uh, well, because in the orchestra we're often doubling the bass line with the cellos, we call it a double bass in my profession. Well, how about you, Bob? Uh, bass. Just, just the bass. <laughs> okay, now, how about you? Uh, I forgot your name. Jerry. Jerry. It's bass. It's an extension of myself. Yeah. And how about you? What's your name? Here? Jonathan. And I just call it the bass also. Okay. Jonathan and Jerry. Okay. It's, I'm slow tonight on remembering names. I'm usually... There's only it's 27 of us. <laughs> well, it, it's not enough people in here for me to remember. <laughs> yeah. you, it has to be more crowded. Yeah. And speaking of crowded, I mean, with all of these uprights in here, this room is very smaller than it. Than it used to be. <laughs> what, would you two agree with me? Yes. yes. <laughs> I mean, when I walk, in, yeah. yeah, when I walked in here, I was like, I walking can't in. breathe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got claustrophobia. <laughs> and, and then another thing about uh, uprights, uh, uh, because I've never played one before in my life. What size is? I heard about three quarters yeah. half. Minimies and this was originally a seven eighth size. It's been cut down to make it more manageable. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, kidding, yeah, really? But I didn't think anybody played anything but a full size. In the yeah, city. that's what I heard. But as a, as a, you know, you still keep the volume. It's got the thicker cord than than you normally see. Uh, I don't even know what that measurement is, but um, but yeah, this is cut down, huh. and that's not atypical. Yeah. Okay, now where was it cut down at? Uh, mainly the 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 outline. Okay, so they shaped it in a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. How about, how about uh, what size is yours? Mine's a three-quarter. Three-quarter? Plain old three-quarter, yeah. That's the, that's the, the average. Uh, I think most bases around are three-quarter. Yeah. Of course, there, uh, there was nothing less than uh, three-quarter when I was growing up, but now you can buy one-tenth, right. one-twentieth, one-tenth, one uh, and, and a little bit larger, a little bit larger all the way up. Hmm. How about you, uh, Bob? What size is yours? It's the, the three quarter. Three quarter. And how about you, Jerry? Three quarter also. How about you, John? Three quarter also. I, I just I just asked that question so I can actually say their names without asking. Did <laughs> 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 good. So so um, and 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 while we're still talking about the bass. Uh, what kind of strings do you use on your uh, bass band? These are Tomastic Spiracore Weich, W-E-I-C-H. That's how you pronounce it, Tomastic. Yes. Okay. That's I, the way I pronounce it. Tomastic. Yeah, because I have yeah. Tomastic, you know. Yeah. Tomastic. Yeah, well, when I call the company and, and pay my $212, uh, that's what they say. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's amazing. How often do you change yours? Well, I used to change them three times a year when they were about $70 or so, but they've really gone up yeah. very fast mm -hmm. in the last five, six years. And uh, now, and I bet you I haven't changed these in a year, and I'm embarrassed to even sit here and play because that's not the way they ordinarily sound. But, but uh, I, I, I could just be lazy. In fact, I know I am. I, just the, the thought of having to change the strings just wears me out, man. It's like, oh, I it's gotta go. It's a piece of cake. Yeah, it really is. is. It? <laughs> they make a little a little wider. wider. Uh -huh. And uh, it doesn't take more than uh, 10 minutes, 15 I, minutes. I mean, just unwrapping them out of the... Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. is a lot of work I to know me. what you mean. Seriously, man. Yeah. And then they say you got to take care of your strings, wipe your bass after you shoot. So. Yes. Uh, man, I probably got so much cake and DNA on my face. Oh, bases. my God. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got CSI on my bass, man. <laughs> 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 all kinds of crime scenes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sitting here with all these marvelous bases with hardly scratches on them, and mine has all these millions. Of and <laughs> I mean, it, it went through the six nights a week and the clubs going back and forth every night, and I think that comes with the territory. You know? Yeah, I, and I think it adds character to the base. 
I don't care how they look. <laughs> exactly. I just only care how they sound. But electric, with some of these pro shops that make these electric bases, they make them beat up from the factory. Right. Really? Yeah, that what they're doing? Yeah. Beat up from the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> World War I. World War I. World War series, right. Yeah, World War. They charge you more money for it. Yeah, they charge you <laughs> a lot <laughs> more money for it. I think the Jacko base was like, and it was like war in the same spots that he wore yeah. that. It was 14000 some dollars, right? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And people were buying them. You'd like my uh, electric bass. I bought it at a pawn shop for uh, about 200 bucks. It's a Gibson Les Paul Oh boy. Deluxe. Yeah. That's yeah. a bad bass. I like Oh, that. yeah. But they're, they're short scale. And uh, But it's easy to play. I hardly ever play it. Mm -hmm. That was, that was uh, my next question. Do you dabble in uh, electric? No. Uh, I lived in Atlanta, Georgia in 1974 to 1977. And uh, down there, I played it a lot. It was just the kind of music we played. It was disco days, and I was playing, doing it, doing it, doing it. And uh, so I, I did play some electric down there. And to me, I played it just like I do this bass, like uh, Bob was talking about. It's it's really up here, not not here. All right. Now, um, just just can you? I I, I know it's hard to toot your own horn sometimes, but just just. Tell me some of the people you play with, and some that we might be familiar with, some that yeah. I might not be familiar with. And um, just, just give me a little uh, list, you know. Well, the days I was doing the TV show for six years, two TV shows, I was playing with Wes Montgomery, mm -hmm. Whitten Kelly, uh, Milt Jackson, um, Junior Mance. I mean, I could I could sit here and name names for the next two years. Mm -hmm. Right, keep going. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got about uh, 19 months left. <laughs> I, wor I worked with Matt Dennis at Baker's. I worked with uh, oh god, some I can't even think of their names now. But I worked with famous people who were on Hee Haw. I worked with uh, somebody different every day. Opera singers. Um, Country Western. It didn't matter. Whoever the guest was on the show used to come on and say, "Okay, I'm doing Misty in two flats. Mm -hmm. One, two, and that's what we do." So mm -hmm. you 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 were a, a sound musician on Hee Haw? No, the 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 guest of Hee Haw was in Detroit and was a guest on this TV show that I did every day. Oh, oh okay. What was, what was the, the name? Show? What was the name? Of oh, the you team? know, I can't remember. It's, it's so it's fifty years ago. Did oh. you do the Soupy Sound show? Oh yeah, a lot. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh, and you know, if yeah. we didn't have this lady sitting over here, I would tell you the funniest soup. <laughs> 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 but um, uh, in fact, um, yeah, I just got a chance to work with everybody from every kind of music, and um, that's why I, th I think that's one of the reasons that Bob Hurst and I play with no music all the time. You just learn every tune. It doesn't matter if it's done as a mm -hmm. waltz. A, a jazz tune, a, a country tune, it's just a tune. And um, that, that's just how I look at the business. Yeah, and it's only 12 notes. Mm -hmm. And no two bass players ever sound the same. To me, that's the miracle of life. Right. Is, yeah. Exactly. Everybody's different. Everybody. Yes. Everybody. Which makes us all the same. Since everybody's different, yeah, that's that right. makes us all the same. I just find that so fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You're totally unique. Just yeah. like yeah. everyone else. That's that's right. I can't handle that. <laughs> I have to say that if you guys are watching this, you need to come and hang out with us here in the basement. Uh, these guys can vouch for, you, vouch for us uh, that we, we do have fun here. So come and let us interview you because I'm coming after you after you anyway so you might as well <laughs> you might as well just come on and yeah. get it over with but uh during these these base round tables and interviews dan plisco dan plisco dan plisco really? dan plisco mm -hmm. your name has come up like a zillion oh, times oh, yeah. for through a lot of these individual base player interviews Thank you. and um I want to know why, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have a feeling it's because I've been teaching so much all these years. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because when we, we had uh, base day down at uh, Motown, right. uh, they asked how many people in this big group, I don't know how many people were in those groups, do you, 
you have any idea? Mm -mm. But anyway, there were a lot of people standing out there, mm -hmm. all electric players, almost. And they said, how many people study with Dan Plisko? And it looked like... There's a sea of hands with well. it. <laughs> and I think maybe that's the reason that people at least may have studied with mm -hmm. me or at least seen my ad in the... Uh, I just <laughs> stopped Metro running Times. it after 34 years <laughs> in the Metro Times. I saw it for a whole bunch of years. <laughs> I, I did. I saw it for a lot of years. In fact, years. I used Bobby's name uh, for... As one of your successes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I was always very really proud to have even, uh, <laughs> oh, well, even touched him, man. I'm, like, sure. I'm proud to be in the presence right now. It's, it's, oh, it's, thank it's, you. Right, yeah, so that's, that's, a, that's a former student right there. Yeah. I just want to vouch, uh, and also a ask a question, but I just wanted to vouch for your you know, great talent as a teacher, which I respect even more since I, I teach now. Thank uh, you. Uh, how, how did you develop your... your uh, uh, concept as far as because uh, uh, um, it's so methodical and it's so well thought out and, and, and I'm embarrassed to answer you because I've never watched anybody else teach <laughs> Wow, <that's deep. laughs> not really and I mean I had classical teachers I studied with uh, three symphony players I studied with Jacob Becker when I played cello and they, those people just never talked to you they would just have you play they would never tell me how to hold my hands or how to do anything. I would play and go home. And um, I also studied with uh, Gaston Brohan, who was uh, an old Germanic DSO player in 1953 when I was going to Wayne. Um, and he used to hit me with a ruler, so I knew I never wanted to do that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, if you dropped your elbow or if your hands weren't right, he would whack you. And he hated me anyway because I played French bow and he only taught German. <laughs> and the, the college made we <laughs> we were talking about that earlier. The, the college made him teach me, and he couldn't stand when I walked in the door. And um, <laughs> and I also studied with uh, Walt Hartman, who was with a symphony. And he would those people just never told you anything. I played and I played and. Um, I played some mandel and some mandel and some mandel and uh, <laughs> I never really became yeah. great at that because uh, it wasn't my interest anyway. I, at, I was working six nights a week when I was doing that. Wow. At the Symphony players are better teachers now. I'm sure yeah. they are. Yeah. They don't do the old world thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'm sure I, they are. I can imagine um, <laughs> because I tell my students that I'm going to tase them, you know. If they <laughs> <laughs> it, it's like the new, it up. yeah, it's the <laughs> new version <laughs> of the rule. If, if they don't, you know, if they don't stay in position or whatever, you know. I'll don't tell you the me. most amazing thing to me. In all the years I've been teaching, I've never lost my temper or gotten angry in that teaching room. Now, I can be six feet away and get mad at my wife or get mad at the, the dog or my kids or whatever. But in the teaching room, I just don't, and I. Some psych, some psychiatrists had better tell me about it because I wish I could do that with everything. Mm. <laughs> so. Well, well um. Uh, do you still teach now? Where where are you currently? Yeah, teaching? I have twenty six students. Are these are private students. Yes, I I'll, I have two of them who are Wayne students. They're trying to weed me out of the. I shouldn't say this. I think <laughs> as I'm getting older, they're trying to weed me out of the. Uh, Wayne State Jazz Studies program. Right, so you teach at Wayne State as well. 32 years. And, and, and Bob, you teach at um, University of Michigan, right? Yes, sir. And, and Rick, you uh, teach? Don't, don't teach at all. Okay. Well, you did You did today. You talked some today. Okay. Okay, that, that's awesome, man. Um, anybody else have any questions for this fine master basis? Did you, did you play any um, uh, acoustic for uh, Motown at all? No, no, because I was wondering how they, you know, back then in the sixties, how they mic'd, how they mic'd. Was they it had a great rhythm. bass player. They didn't need me. I know. I know. <laughs> it's hard to get past James. Uh, yeah, but you know, it's funny. I, I don't even know if I should say this. I, I'm real good friends with Joe Messina, who was part of the yes. the band there, yeah. and he told me that all those jazz players they hired hated that job. Forever, oh, they just they did it, and they did it great, but they never liked it. It was really not sour. their kind of music. Oh, it was the music, huh? Yeah. Wow. They got paid. They got paid, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so, then, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Well, and Joe never complained about uh, the bread. He yeah. always said that. And the rest is well. history, right? Yeah. Like, when you look back on it now, it's, it's even more important than it was 
back in those yeah. days. Kids don't even know about it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. My students, when I <laughs> when I'm teaching them, they don't know about Motown. They don't know about World War II. They don't know about they don't know how to make out an envelope and put their address return address here. They put the return address here and the regular address up there. It's, it's a very different world. Yeah, it would probably freak out if you asked them to lick a stamp, wouldn't it? That's yeah. probably true. Because you don't have to do that That's anymore. not on emails, that's right. <laughs> okay, that, that's true. They, they, a lot of them don't, didn't, don't even know that uh, techno. Yeah, that's right true. That's weird. Well, it's just a different world. Whether it's better or worse, I don't know. But, you know, I got I got a series of questions I like to ask sure. you. Um, what kind of pickups do you use to amplify your? This is a Wilson pickup. They cost when I bought it, it was uh, four fifty. Well, yeah, about three ninety five. Okay. Now they're selling for about nine hundred bucks. <laughs> so, um, so so how's it? Right, it it, it uses are, the bridge. There are four holes and with a, a small mic in each one. You can turn each mic so that it gets louder or softer, <coughs> so you can match all four strings. Mm -hmm. And um, for years, I worked. I, I used all the hundred-dollar pickups because I didn't couldn't find anything better. Mm -hmm. And once, maybe about twenty years ago, I went to Toronto, and I heard walked into a club and heard one of the great bass players there, and I said to my wife Phyllis, "I'm buying it, no matter what he's got." I'm buying it because it was so different from what I had been using. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I brought it home and all the people I was working with at that time said to me that right away, what the hell happened to your bass? <laughs> really? They were amazed because wow. there was that much difference. Mm -hmm. So you have to look. When, what you're talking about now as far as how do you make a bass sound good, it's like taking this circle of stuff that is the bass, what kind of strings, how high your bridge is, what kind of pickup, what kind of amplifier. It's, it takes years to get all that stuff to work. Mm -hmm. you That's why I'm asking you, to, so I can cut out all of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I wish there were a shortcut. <laughs> you just have to really be patient. Do you any, know any shorter way than that? To amplify your, your rig, your, your axe, I mean. And that's true with anybody, even with electric gas. It takes a little while for you to get yeah, right. to the gear. Yeah, but you know, mm. I use the David Gage pickup on, on my bass, uh, uh, or the Realist. Um, and where does it grab the sound from? It's, it's, it's underneath the bridge. Okay, and yeah, I heard of that. Underneath the foot of the bridge. And uh, that works That works fine for me. Uh, uh, I heard... Um, I heard some negative thing. Cats had had uh, damage to their bass from the oh. some of the first ones, and then. But I remember I heard uh, uh, the legendary uh, uh, Cuban bassist Cachao. Oh, yeah. He was playing at, wow. at the University yeah. Universal Amphitheater. It was <laughs> big, big gig, <laughs> and his bass. And he wasn't playing. I can tell he wasn't playing a good bass, right. but it was humping, man. It was like, <laughs> it was, and it was more. It was like the real, real uh, bass, you know. Uh, I could feel the air move, you know, so mm -hmm. I really yeah. like that. But recently, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, traveling is, is um, I haven't traveled with my bass in, in years, I mean, uh, not, uh, less since 9-11, you know. Do you rent a bass? Yeah, yeah I, I get the bass du jour, and... Uh, so you're stuck with whatever you got. Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the way uprights play now, it's like they gotta have a yeah. bass. On, uh, in the back line or whatever nowadays, right? I've rented mine out with the people who came to town. I have to. Have you let Esperanza use yours? Not uh, yet. I think Carrie let her let him use it. Yeah, really? Carrie let yes. yeah, had the be, pleasure yeah. of her fingers touching his face. Stroke that dog. The value of that bass just went up a thousand bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about you, Rick? Uh, any amplification? Yeah, I uh, you know try to keep the acoustic sound. So I use a Countryman, and I just clip it onto this Velcro piece, um, whether by an alligator clip. It gets a real good acoustic sound. Okay. So this is a D Wolfer, by the way, in case anyone's wondering. Yeah. So kind of dampens the A flat Wolf. Okay. Yeah. So you use a country man, not a city man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah pretty much. And every bass that I found, everyone has one note that's like a little yeah. deader than all the others. Right, right. 
Now they used to talk about the fishman. The fishman. All the That's what everybody used. That's what everybody used now. Yeah. Is there a difference here. between a, a bass mic and a transducer? Is there a difference between those two things? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Great electrician than I am. <laughs> We we have to get it, uh, one of those guys right. in here. It's probably you don't somebody. Have to be wet, be wet it's probably somebody it's watching wet this wet right now can answer that. No, I know some. I know some people. Yeah. I think the transducer is like a magnet technology, mm -hmm. whereas the uh, microphone is like. That's also stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I think a transducer is part of the microphone. Is that true? I think it's part of any microphone. You can edit this out, right? <laughs> 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 go, 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 to the, go to the blooper reel. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, so so you've been teaching quite um, okay. quite some time. Um, yes. Who, who are some of the other students that has came through your um, your teaching camp? Well, this is the most famous. I, if anybody has ever reached anything other than being a plain old player, which is what I try to get them to be, I don't know about it. Um, I mean, I taught Carrie Lacey. Uh, I taught uh, just a lot of people in town and out of town, and we yeah. had fun doing it. Yeah, and you also did Reginald Canty, right? Yes, that's right. Our, our host, the well, those some yeah, absolutely um, those some nice Detroit bass players. I mean, yeah, Carrie Lacey did uh, Gladys Knight. Oh yes. Um, Reginald Canty did Diana Ross. So. Ooh. Okay. So I mean, you yeah, know, that makes me proud. Yeah, they could add that to your. Uh, I will to your uh, gumbo right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's, I'm waiting for one of my students to blow up and play with somebody one day. You <laughs> know will. what I'm saying? They will. Um, speaking from the electric end, sure. Um, was the uh, you know you, you both have played. Uh, electric bass in some gigs. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the uh, fretless? Well, was that any like? Better for you as far as playing? Did you try to practice the fretless and all? Better for more than I can. Yeah, I got a bunch of fretless bases. I love it. Okay. I love it. Okay. Uh, uh, um, you know, I'm not like really wanting to. Uh, uh, speaking of Lamont Johnson, he used to have this uh, uh, Fender Mustang, like a short scale mm. fretless bass that he used to play, and it was so. It was so funky, man. It was, mm -hmm. and uh, also uh, uh, Ralph Armstrong. Those those cats were. Oh, yeah, I heard Ralph. them. I heard them like kind of before Jocko was. Mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. Yes. And and, and, and uh, so so I I, uh, I, I love it. I love it. Both yeah. Detroit bass players, yeah. by the way. Yes, that's that's yeah, right. right. Yeah. Uh, I noticed from all three of you guys after watching you play um, that you don't look at your fingerboard. Now, I can't say fretboard because you don't have frets, right? Mm -hmm. In the morning, when you sit at the uh, table, drink. Do you drink coffee? No. What do you drink? Uh, gin and juice. Okay. <laughs> you know, you know where that glass sits, and you can sit and read the paper, and you can put that hand out without looking and grab that glass, and you'll hit it every time. You do a million things in life, whether it's walking up the stairs, whether it's drinking, whether whatever you do, you don't look. And what I try to teach my students is, if you put your hand here, the first note, which is A flat, and if you play up to here, that you can know that distance and play A to, to D. It's not by accident. You know what the distance is. Yeah. So why do I have to look? Mm -hmm. Can you explain it any more than that? It's nothing to see. It's just a uh, blank fingerboard, so it's nothing yep. really. Yeah. Yeah. It's not I'm not it's looking when I did that. It's nothing to look at. Usually, and that's a better average than I usually have. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I understand what you're saying. I'm, my hand can actually reach in my pocket and say, oh, that's, Same yeah, that's yeah. a lighter on yeah, no those keys. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they can mm -hmm. see without a, it uh, goes to the you same You do a way. million things like that. Yeah. Plus the uh, the crook of the neck is it? It's right. a D yes. neck or an right. E yes. flat or an E. You there know, are you some use. visual things we use. Yeah, and any portion of that, you know, you get used to, you know, Landmark your notes being. Yeah, sure. That. Okay, so is there any truth to the fact that there are actually positions on the upright bass? Absolutely. Yes. 
Okay. There are classical positions, and also there are guys who never learn those. And uh, Rick can tell you easily. I never he, learned the positions. Yeah. I mean, so I half at first. I looked at the yeah. Samando book, and they got like yeah. zero positions, half, zero one and one, one two, two, and two, yeah. three, exactly. And three. Yeah, well, those which are is the, the most ridiculous thing that, that I ever heard of. Whoever designed that, Mr. Samando, yeah, to say a, 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 a second and third half position. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds weird, but right. Two, but three. fingerings would be written over the notes. Yes, so and, you, that's what you really. Learn. Yeah, uh, positions are the Roman numerals underneath. Right, right. That's what I'm talking about. The okay. Roman numerals, the actual positions along yeah. the the. Uh, kind of there's no zero position. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an open. Screen. It's called, it's called open, yeah. open. You just have yeah. to learn what to leave out and what to use and what's worthless and what's worth what's worth it. Okay, and, mm -hmm. and, and do you guys think that? People should still like this, like this young man here, should still pick up the upright or, or, I mean, I'm talking about these fat ones you can put in the fireplace and burn up in five minutes, <laughs> as opposed to, you know, I mean, yeah. the the uh, <laughs> the transportation alone is is worth the 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 gig, you know what I'm saying? As I play for free, but you paying for me to carry this thing to and from the gig, you know? Yes. What about, I mean, is you think guys should still keep picking this thing up or should they grab those little, uh, now these new tutti fruity, fresh and fruity <laughs> electrics that they, all these compromises that they're doing? Chicks dig the upright, man. Uh, uh, that's it. Yeah. That's it. A guy who can treat an upright right, uh, that's a ladies' man. Uh, and, 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 and so have you, I mean, have you. <laughs> Have you guys like tried to try those little things? I'm try I can't remember the names of these. Yeah, the stick bases. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah the, the electronic yeah, ones. Just like a stick. Yeah. Like kind of base. You what, what they, give me a name so I can the arrange it. Sure. Sure. There's a Clevenger, yeah. there's an Upton. There's yeah, a, we just call them sticks. Zeta. Zeta. Yeah. Right, okay, so oh, have you played okay. those? Are they yes. good reproductions or are they all right substitutes? What, what, what do you think yes. about them? Some are better than others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I and think it's, it's, his like own, it's his own genre of instrument. It is. Yes, yes, it is. There's, there's a bass player, uh, Eberhard Weber. Uh, yep. Uh, he's from Northern Europe, Europe somewhere. Uh, uh, I'm not sure mm -hmm. if he's uh, uh, Swedish or Norwegian. Norwegian. But, uh, Norwegian. Norwegian. Uh, but he's been playing that for years. I mean, he's like yep. one of the first guys doing it. And he used it with, uh, he had a five strings. And he also, you know, he bowed it with like lots of different effects and mm -hmm. different things. Yes. And that's the, that's the, that's a cool sound. It, it doesn't. It's not the same as this. It's not the same. <coughs> and uh, but it, uh, uh, but uh, the the Epic Baby Bass is, is really good too. I mean, that was like another one of the early early ones. Early nineteen fifties. Yeah, and for Latin music, man, that's you know for some set, uh, things, it's better than this because you can get it can be really super loud. You know. Yes, so, so that's true. Is it, I think it's just the difference between the way the pitches are. Produced. This is produced in the chamber, and it takes a little while for it to get to your ear, so you have more control over the attack. But once you hit one with electric, you got that one level of attack. It's not going to diminish unless you turn the knob down. Well, without yeah. this body, it's not going to sound like that. Do yeah. It? Yeah. That's what. That's what. So they're different of character, but right. Yeah. That's that's what I was thinking. All depends how much of a purist you want to be. Right. Okay. So um, then back to you again. Um, yep. Growing up as a uh, celloist, bassist, uh, who were some of your inspirations on the instrument that um, that you know that you was like, oh, I gotta, I can't wait to put this up under my fingers and all that kind of stuff. Well, I, well, I used to lie in bed listening to this late night uh, this DJ, and as he played all these jazz tunes. I don't think I really knew what I was listening to, but after years of doing that, I knew I, I loved the music. When I got into high school, I started to listen to that music, and we used to go down to Al's Record Mart, which was in the, under the, right next door to the Broadway Capitol Theater, where the, the opera house is now, and we'd buy 78s, and all stand around and listen to them. And here we're listening to uh, Ray Brown and Paul Chambers and whoever and whoever and whoever. And 
when I started to play bass, that's I had all that little background in me, so at least I had a direction to go to go in. And um, I don't know. Does that answer that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever your answer is, there's no wrong answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't say wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, you it it works for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but okay. Well, uh, man, you know I, I've been having a blast here, folks. Uh, me too. You you need to you need to watch these episodes. Uh, this is called the upright episodes. Uh, we're going to be doing an interview with uh, Bob Hurst. We're going to be doing one with Rick, and we're doing one with Dan here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We got a couple of upright, more upright guys, but we don't have time to do them today. But but we we, we guys, yeah, will you come back, man? And uh, oh yes, as an alumni, because now that you're here, you you you've been uh, in the basement, so come back and, and let's do an official interview with you guys. That cool. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, sorry, I I'm not asking Earl and and Bruce. Agababian. So well. He's a name slinger. <laughs> you know that right. name killed when I did it. We did an interview with this guy. I recommend you go back. I recommend you go back and check out the Bruce interview. It was fun. I could not say that to save my life. And now I'm, I'm like, if you need somebody to pronounce your name, <laughs> hire me. I'll come. <laughs> I'll be the MC of the Agababian. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Armenian. And, um, and and again, Earl, uh, wonderful guys, uh, and of course uh, Reggie, and uh, yeah, really. who, who can't sit still. Uh. <laughs> Anybody got any questions for these guys? Because you know, I yes, I, I don't want to keep them. Uh, I, day, but, I, I do. Yeah, uh, please. For for Dan, sure. Um, <clears throat> I just want to run run a couple of names by you because with your history. Uh, I just interested um, when you were talking about going to Toronto. Yeah. Um, did you was that going to Bourbon Street uh, to hear Dan Thompson or Don Thompson with Ed Bickert and Paul Desmond in the same? Uh, I, I have done that. Okay. And I really can't think of the name of the bass player that I saw who had that pickup. Who had the pickup? Okay. One, I didn't know one of the well-known Toronto yeah. bass players. Yeah. I didn't know if that was Don or not. No. But I, I listened to him all. Oh, the he's time. amazing. Ed Bickert. Yeah. yeah. And the other, the the other two that are Michigan-based players are um, Jack Brusky and Eddie Safransky. Did you have, as your peers, did you have an opportunity to interact with those guys? No, not at all. Okay, because I remember that um, Jack was out of Saginaw. Eddie was gigging down here with right. uh, with doing some nice gigs with Bob Deering, piano player. Yes, I knew Bob Deering. Yeah, he was from, he's, he's also a psychiatrist. Yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah, he was up in Traverse City. I worked with him for years. Now really? He's living, now he's living in Arizona. I didn't know that. Yeah. I'd love to talk to him, sure. Oh, I'll get you his number. All right. Bob is a sweetheart. Oh, but, yeah. But um, I remember uh, Bob telling me about Eddie and Jack and how they were always runners up with each other, competing for the downbeat <laughs> oh. best jazz bassist poll, and Eddie beat Jack out in 1948 and 1949. Oh, really? And Eddie was like the, got first place, I think, at 40, 47, 48, 49, 50, and maybe 51, yeah. which really surprised me with the likes of some of the other great bass players that yes. were coming up at that point in time. Sure. And since he was gigging around here and uh, I didn't know. That, that was a little earlier than when I, I started in 51. Okay. So. Probably can, minus can I one year you, old. Can I tell you a, a, a part of my life that's real important? And, uh, yes. Do you have time for that? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Because yeah. um, as much as I love playing and uh, as much as I love teaching and, and music and this whole circle of this that goes on, um, I started taking photos on my first gig. And I took them all through the years. There were times I didn't, and I wish I did. Uh, there were times I couldn't afford it. And um, but anyway, I, I now have twelve thousand seven hundred. Wow. Oh, um, they're all on a website, so that you can see them. Um, and what is that website? Pardon me. What is that website? I can't tell you. You have to email me at uh, d 
Plisco, P-L-I-S-K-O-W, at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to send you the website. It's too long. I can't remember it in my head. And anyway, they're all 12,700 photos with uh, captions, so you know who the people are. Uh, 3,200 of them came from the basement of the Union, so they go way back. There are wow, groups in saw, early yeah. Detroit that from 1920. It's looking like a young buck on some of the pictures. It's, it's <laughs> amazing. It really is. And the other thing I did, I, I can't even tell you why I started to do that, but I love history and whatever. So anyway, in addition to the photos, I, someone had given, well, I shouldn't say that. A good friend of mine died when I was 23 years old. He died uh, on the road, and his wife gave me his reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, and I started taking it to work every night. I had, by the time I stopped doing that, I had 2,500 hours of reel-to-reel -reel tape, and I donated it to the Library of Congress. They are now digitizing it and putting it into their files. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. So I have me with Wes, me with uh, blah, 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 me with uh, all these people in, from the early Detroit. Some are terrible, some are good, whatever. And um, the thing that was interesting was, and uh, what I'm going to tell you is so humbling I can't even begin to tell you. I think you can tell from what I'm talking about tonight that I love what I do so much yeah. that I've never done it for money. I don't care about money. I do it for the love of playing, yeah. uh, the love of teaching, the love of passing it on. I, I love the jazz business to no end. Try not to let it get in the way of my family and everybody else. And um, I was called 10 days before the Detroit Jazz Festival by Chris Collins, who was the head of that festival. And he said to me, we're giving out a Jazz Guardian Award to Dave Brubeck. And I thought, how great, you know. He said the man never got, only got, he only got one award while he was alive, so we're going to give this one to his kids and Chris and Danny. And he said, we're also going to give a second award. And he said, I want you to be downtown 9 o'clock on uh, Sunday night. And uh, we're going to give you a Jazz Guardian Award. Oh, that's nice. And yeah. Yeah. So here I am standing, standing there in front of 3,000 people saying, I only had a bass in my hand instead of this piece of paper. <laughs> my hand started to shake and my knees started to shake. But anyway, uh, it, it, the next day everything was back to normal. And I still love what I'm doing. I don't feel any different. But I just think you should know that um, there are, there's all this Detroit history that is so marvelous, the stuff that got passed on into these people who are in this room, that I'm always amazed, you know. So am I. So am yeah. I. Yes. Um, that, that's awesome, man. I, I, I was reading about that, that you're, the, these recordings from way back has been uh, sent to the Library of Congress. So, and if we wanted to hear some of this stuff, uh, what do we have to do? Call me up, I'll send you a CD with some of it. <laughs> <laughs> we call you and reach you at uh, email, do you have a website? I don't have a website, but I, the, my email, like, like I said before, is D Plusco P-L-I-S-K-O-W, at gmail.com. You can call me, I mean, I, I'm probably real dumb to do this, 248-549. Uh, Five five seven five. I'd love to share this with anybody who wants it. Yeah. Do you guys have a Facebook page? Anything? I'm there. Yeah, Robert Hurst. Yeah. Robert Hurst on Facebook. Dan Plisco yeah, on Facebook. Yeah, we're Rick Roberts on Facebook. Because yeah. that's my thing, Facebook. Yep. Yeah. All right, so I can reach y'all and hang out with y'all on Facebook. Yeah, absolutely. Anything you guys like to say in closing? Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. 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 I'd like to thank you for thank what you're you. doing. This is a marvelous thing that I've never ever seen before. I could be selfish and do it for myself, but for that matter, because I mean, I'm the only one that sees it like this, but this is a great thing. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. That's the best for you guys to come down here. I appreciate yeah. all of you to come out. Big guy. Yeah. All right. And, and Earl gonna put us on his uh, show. Let us know how he enjoyed it. And thank us. you, Big Guy Williams, for doing the yes, camera work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 this is uh, this is a pleasure for me.
It was a pleasure. It was now, absolutely fun. Now you said something that you you never seen anything like this before, right? Right. Okay. How about you guys three play together something that we never seen yeah, that'd be before? Yeah. So closing us out, ladies and gentlemen, the three bases. Robert Hurst, Dan Plisco, and Rick Robinson. One, two, one, two.